What's up, Brewing TV? It's been a while. I'm your host, Jay Keeler. My co-host today, the Cobra. That's right, I named my mustache. And Garth, my photographer, is here as well. We're here at Surly Brewing Company. Uh-huh, an awesome brewery with an awesome story. We're gonna take you deep inside. And much like the Cobra, Surly cannot be contained. Prepare for the ride of your life. nearly five years since Surly Brewing Company first went on tap in the Twin Cities. Since then, the brewery has earned a cult-like following with its badass beers, edgy attitude, and commitment to the community. They've made friends and fans all over the country through beer trades and public events like Surly Fest and Darkness Day. Brewing TV, The Cobra, and our photo guy, Garth, visited Surly several times during the brewery's most intense production season. This fall, Surly brewed, packaged, and released at least four specialty beers on top of their normal brewing schedule and hosting Darkness Day. BTV basically had free reign to run wild, and run wild we did. In this episode, you'll get to know Surly Brewing Company and the Surly volunteers while brewing a batch of Furious, canning wet, bottling and wax dipping darkness, getting crazy at Darkness Day, and crashing a Friday night tour. You've been warned, this episode is a beast. I started off um, as a master brewer at uh, Miller Brewing Company. Uh, um, uh, actually, that's not true. Um, sort of like a couple other craft brewers out there, started off home brewing. Um, you know, it all really revolves around making great beer. That's really, you know, what the whole story is about at, at any brewery. And um, uh, meeting Todd Haug, um, who's the head brewer, at that point was the head brewer at Rock Bottom in Minneapolis. Um, and getting him on board um, to be the brewer here at Surly. I'm not the brewer. I, like, I dumped enough homebrew down the drain to know I probably shouldn't be the brewer. <laughs> so um, getting in a professional brewer involved um, was a key component because, you know, if you got three guys at homebrew who think they can open a brewery, good fucking luck. <laughs> you got to edit that out. Um, I started out homebrewing, um, got a job at Summit, uh, for almost, was there for almost five years. And then got a job at Rock Bottom, and uh, I look, it's easy to look back on kind of my prep years of doing what I'm doing now, but uh, Summit was a, was a place I really needed to be as a 21-year-old home brewer, because it really put the serious nature of, of brewing um, and not to be cavalier about um, the product. Um, where I think the pub environment is less serious. It doesn't mean the beer isn't as serious, but it's just, it, the batches are smaller, um, product turns in different ways, you're not worried about shelf life, all that stuff. So with that in, in mind, the problem with when I worked at a production facility first was that I wasn't being creative with beer. So um, Rock Bottom allowed me to get back into that creative process. Meanwhile, I was, was taking welding classes and just stuff I enjoyed to do outside of work and didn't really know that I was basically grooming myself to help Omar open a production facility. He and I literally built the brewery um, in the end of like the last quarter of 2005. That's all we did was uh, sweat copper and put stainless steel stuff together and work on putting this brewery together. So you know, that was a huge component, just getting the doors open. But you know, once we started brewing, it was really about brewing some great beer. We always say like we brewed beer for people that didn't know they wanted it till they drank it. You know, I mean, the people watching, you guys, you're all beer guys. You, you know, that's one of the reasons you start home brewing is like you had a beer when you took a trip and you want to try and make it again, but you can't find it. Well, I mean, that's some of the stuff we did.
So it's usually pretty loud. Um, you know, it's uh, like, I guess, tying into that music stuff. You know, brewing's kind of a lifestyle job. So I want to make it kind of somewhat pleasant environment to work at for folks. So, um, of course, you know, it kind of helps if you like metal. It's certainly been adopted somewhat. You know, that's just my ideal. That's, you know, Omar's certainly um, into it, but he's not, you know, I wouldn't say he's a metalhead. Um, but a lot, most of the people here are probably 80%. Uh, that work here, and that's why we listen to pretty heavy stuff on the floor, but we, we mix it up. Make beer, we listen to a lot of metal. I don't really like metal, but I deal with it. I'm coming to like it. You know, for me, it's it's all about working and, and, have, and having, you know, driving music to kind of keep you busy. Jazz does is great in the morning, we listen to a lot of that, but it doesn't really keep you motivated to, to work for 12 hours. You know, Power Mad was a band that I'm still in, but uh, joined when I was in high school and uh, immediately went out of high school, signed a, a major record deal and went on tour and that's kind of where I discovered regional beer was when we were touring. And, uh, you know, I was underage, but, you know, most of the clubs we played didn't really ask so much or sometimes they did, but, you know, more often than not I was able to try a lot of different beers that I couldn't ever see here or get, a, get here. So that's kind of what really inspired me to uh, get into beer and start homebrewing. So it's very, very connected for me, music and beer. Furious, it is a kind of a hybrid between an a amber malty for, malt forward style ale and uh, American IPA. So you get all the backbone of uh, some malt from England called Golden Promise from Simpsons. You get uh, a lot of crystal uh, from England also. Um, so a really rich, borderline sweet without all those hops in it. Um, so we had a fair amount of hops for bittering and then uh, a lot of finishing hops in the Whirlpool and also dry hop it. Bender is our uh, kind of our American brown ale loosely in that category. It's brewed with oatmeal. Um, we use a lot of malt from Belgium in that one so it's got a nice um, kind of raisiny chocolate character. Uh, it's still fairly hoppy. We finish hop it with Willamette. To me, when I smell it, it always smells kind of like a, those candies, with orange slices when you whack it and it breaks into segments. Yeah. Like chocolate covered orange kind of thing going on with that beer. Cynic is our uh, Saison, which is a Belgian style. It's going to be light in color, light in body. Um, it's actually modeled after Saison DuPont. It's the one beer we actually make that we call a style. So. Um, and the, the, the irony there is that Saison style is kind of like the, the broadest category ever, so, which is kind of fun. Um, so it's not spiced. We rely on um, the yeast we use to give it all of its spicy character. Makes a lot of black pepper flavor, but uh, we have finished hop that one with uh, Slovenian um, Styrian Goldings, which uh, have a nice kind of peach, apricot, stone fruit kind of uh, aroma. Then the fourth one is Coffee Bender, which is uh, Bender uh, infused with fresh locally roasted coffee from Coffee and Tea Limited. Surly also releases some seasonal favorites in cans. Bitter Brewer, Surly Fest, Hell, and Abrasive Ale. Check out this cartoonified likeness of Todd Howog on the Bitter Brewer can. Choice. And 2010 was the first year Surly canned wet, their wet hopped ale. So it's our fresh hop, wet hop, harvest ale. Everyone seems to have a little different name. I saw a hop union, one of the hop brokers called it green hops. So they're all usually green, but I guess that. So, you know, I mean, ours are, and everyone does them a little bit differently. Uh, you know, you can sprinkle a little bit of hops on it and call it a fresh hop beer. But what we wanted to do was, you know, sort of 
like whenever Todd and I are talking about a new recipe, we always talk about well, what makes it surly, what's going to make it unique, what makes it ours. So with this beer, um, it's a West Coast style IPA, which is obviously a pretty hop forward beer and hop centric beer. And we decided to basically, you know, we've got some bittering hops in there, but pretty much everything comes from, um, from the whole hops, the, the fresh hops. So this year we uh, had 2,400 pounds of hops that we brewed this beer with. Uh, we brewed 120 barrels of beer with that, and uh, so 20 pounds a barrel. But Surly's most over-the-top offering is Darkness, a Russian Imperial Stout brewed only once a year and released at the brewery during an event called Darkness Day. This year, nearly 2,000 people showed up for the beer release and the party that followed. Darkness Day became, you know, sort of an unbelievable um, event, you know, when we started putting it in bottles because um, that first year people were buying it at bars and then pouring it into bottles and then capping it and bringing it and sharing it. And I'm just like, you know, the beer is going to taste awful, you know, if you do that. So we started bottling it that first year. And me and Omar are always like, how, I mean, you know, pretty much what the f <laughs> I mean, what? It's, it's definitely a shock. It's definitely, how did this, you know, we never saw it coming. There's no way. So this will be the fourth year we've done it, uh, Darkness Day here, which is in uh, two weekends. And I know, I know we got one guy coming out from LA um, to uh, come to the event. I know some folks are coming up from Alabama and all over the Midwest. So it's, it's pretty crazy. I never would have guessed um, that that beer would have inspired the cult following that it, is, it has gotten to.